This is KGW News at Noon. Today, we announce criminal extortion charges against Michael Avenatti. And we start with that breaking news. Celebrity lawyer Michael Avenatti has been arrested in New York after prosecutors claim he tried to extort $20 million from Nike. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. Now, according to federal prosecutors, Avenatti claimed to have evidence linking Nike to a major scandal involving high school and college basketball players. KGW's Christine Pitawanich is live now in the newsroom. So, Christine, walk us through what just happened. Well, Brenda, new information just keeps coming in because this is such a developing situation. But first, just a reminder, many of us may remember Michael Avenatti because he's the lawyer who represented adult film star Stormy Daniels, who sued the president and said she had an affair with him more than a decade ago. But now he is back in the news, accused of trying to extort $20 million from Nike. Prosecutors in New York say Avenatti tried to get money by, quote, threatening to use his ability to garner publicity to inflict substantial financial and reputational harm on the company if his demands were not met. Shortly before the charges were made public, Avenatti tweeted that he planned to hold a press conference tomorrow to, quote, disclose a major high school and college basketball scandal perpetrated by Nike that he said he had uncovered. He said this criminal conduct reaches to the highest levels of Nike and involves some of the biggest names in college basketball. An FBI agent said in a court document that Avenatti said he'd canceled the damaging press conference if Nike hired himself and another lawyer to conduct an internal investigation for 15 to 25 million dollars. Avenatti told the company it could skip paying for an internal investigation if instead it simply paid him 22.5 million dollars. Avenatti was arrested as he was arriving to meet with Nike's lawyers. He's also facing wire and bank fraud charges in California. We've reached out to Nike, but have not heard back just yet. Meantime, Snorby Daniels has also tweeted, saying she's saddened but not shocked to hear the news. We'll continue to follow updates and bring them to you when we get them. Back to you, Brenda. Absolutely, Christine. Thank you very much. You can follow us on air and online. Go to the KGW News app or our KGW Facebook page. Also today, an eight-year legal battle over the murder of Rainier's police chief is finally coming to an end. Tomorrow, the man charged with the crime is expected to change his plea. The judge is also scheduled to sentence Daniel Butts. Investigators say he was trying to steal a hot rod from a stereo shop back in 2011 and shot police chief Ralph Painter during a confrontation. Last year, a judge found Butts competent to stand trial. Butts suffers from schizophrenia and has been in the state psychiatric hospital since the shooting. Our news partner, The Oregonian, reports Butts will likely receive a life sentence. It was a false narrative. It was, it was a terrible thing. Uh, we can never let this happen to another president again. That's President Trump speaking out this morning after the Justice Department released a summary of Robert Mueller's Russia probe yesterday. The president is claiming total exoneration. Attorney General William Barr found no evidence of collusion between the president and Russia in the 2016 presidential election. Mueller's report did not exonerate the president on possible obstruction, but Barr and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein concluded the conduct did not reach the threshold of a crime. In the meantime, Democrats argue Barr, who had criticized the investigation, is not a neutral observer. They argue Barr's summary should be released to the public. They also want Mueller to testify as they move forward on several investigations that include possible obstruction by the president. Well, local lawmakers and political analysts are reacting to the Mueller report. KGW's Tim Gordon has more on what they're saying. The attorney general's summary of the Mueller report is getting panned by most of Oregon's congressional delegation. The Democrats say it's way too little to go on. Congressman Earl Blumenauer tweeting, a four-page summary by a Trump appointee does not properly reflect two years of work by Mueller's team. America deserves to see it all now. 
Senator Jeff Merkley tweeting, Barr was handpicked because he said the president couldn't be charged with obstruction. And guess what? He decided no obstruction. Shocker. President Trump's take on the summary emphasizes what he's been saying over and over. No collusion, no obstruction. But even if Mueller's work is over, it's not the last word, according to political science professor Jim Moore. The, the president has, has, has come out and said no collusion, completely exonerated. And Democrats are disappointed because they wanted to see blood on the floor. Um, but there's enough holes in the letter that people are going to read the entire report. Remember, earlier this month, the House of Representatives voted 420 to zero to demand the Justice Department release the full findings. That included a yes vote from Oregon's lone Republican in Congress, Greg Walden. Walden didn't address that in a statement, but did say Mueller's exhaustive work makes clear that President Trump and his campaign did not collude with the Russians, period. Adding, now those who promoted this conspiratorial theory should accept the facts of Mr. Mueller's findings. But the president's opponents don't want to accept it. So if they force the issue, do they have a legal leg to stand on? Tim Gordon is also covering that angle of the story live from Lewis and Clark College today. So, Tim, you just talked to a law professor there. Yeah, Brenda, we just did, and he had some very interesting insights. You know that House vote to release all the information that we just talked about in our piece? Well, that was a non-binding resolution, so it didn't really have any teeth. So given that, what can those in favor of releasing the report do to make it happen? Well, we know Democrats have said they'd use subpoena powers and other tools to get answers. They've also argued that Republicans got lots of information from the Justice Department in the past, recent past really, when they were in charge of investigating Hillary Clinton's private email server and even the Russia investigation itself. So they could use that precedent. But there are other things to consider as roadblocks to releasing all of the details. So there is grand jury um, secrecy generally, although judges can undo that. Um, to the extent you have ongoing investigations, there's always that concern that Congress can end up um, messing things up. Now, even President Trump says he supports the release of Mueller's full report, but it may not be all that fast or simple. In fact, any full report that gets released will very likely be chock full of redactions. Brenda, back to you. Will, thank you very much, Tim. That brings us to our viewer voice poll this noon. Should Congress keep investigating the president? Yes or no? Go to the vote tab on our KGW News app or go to kgw.com vote and we will be updating the results a little later in the show. Hey, a quick heads up today for bikers and walkers. Starting today, the bike and pedestrian bridge across the Columbia Slough closes for three months. It is just north of the Columbia Boulevard wastewater treatment plant. Crews are repairing a sewer pipe. The bridge will reopen on June 23rd. Well, if you're out and about this afternoon, there is a good chance you'll see a little rain. Here's the view from our Wells Fargo Skycam. Look at those low clouds. So, Rod, you're watching the radar for us. Yeah, you know, this morning we uh, predicted correctly that the rain would start late morning and then it would be pretty wet uh, for uh, much of the afternoon. I, I thought it wouldn't be steady, and now I'm wondering maybe it will be a steady light rain for the coming three, four, or five hours. You see all the clouds sweeping up really across just about all of our state except for the far east, and there's that uh, channel of rain that's clearly moving south and north. On the radar, are from the valley, certainly up into the foothills of the Cascades. It's all steady rain. Now, most of this will continue to be light. There may be some pockets of heavier rain mixed in at times. Do want to let you know, no travel concerns. Snow levels are relatively high. You can see it's 45 degrees at government camp right now where they're just starting to see some light rain up around Mount Hood. You mentioned, Brenda, the low, dark overcast. We have 54 degrees, and with the rain now falling and expected much of this afternoon, the temperature is going to hold steady to actually go down a little bit. If you look carefully, I think you can see the raindrops from our Stoller Family Estates uh, vineyard camera. And if you look at uh, nearby Domain Serene, I like this camera because you can see the roadway, and it's clearly wet going up to uh, the vineyard there. So for your afternoon, drip, drip, drip. Fairly steady temperatures in the low to mid 50s, but Brenda, no storm concerns. That's good news. Back to you. I like the sound effects, though, Rod. Thank you much. <laughs>
E-scooters are coming back to Portland this morning. Peabot announced that its second pilot program will start late next month. This time around, it expects another 500 scooters on the streets. There will also be some new requirements for e-scooter companies. They will be required to issue warnings, fines, and suspend the accounts of people who don't comply with the rules of the road. Riders will also be charged a 25 cent fee. Peabot says the money will eventually be used to build more bike lanes and neighborhood greenways that riders can use. The pilot program starts April 26th and goes until April of 2020. Today in Boston, the first defendants in the college admissions scandal will be arraigned in federal court. The group includes college administrators and coaches. Some parents will also head to court later this week accused of paying to get their kids into top colleges. The most high profile parents involved, actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin, will be in court next month. It blew through and it just came flooding in. The wave. The wave. The wave just crashed over. Crashed right, crashed right through. Terrifying stories from passengers rescued from that cruise ship off the coast of Norway over the weekend. The ship issued a mayday call during a storm. Then engine trouble caused it to drift toward the rocky coast. 1,300 people were on board, including a couple from Washington. As NBC's Keir Simmons reports, the ship sailed despite early weather warnings. A daring rescue operation. Helicopters in high winds, pulling people from a ship stricken by huge waves. Next thing you know, you're jerked off the deck and we're out here and the helicopter's over there because the wind's blowing like crazy. Barry Anderson's wife, Carola, filmed as he was hauled into the helicopter. And I was never so thankful when they yarded me. Below deck, furniture, plants and people were thrown around. Here, a woman narrowly avoids a chair, only to be hit by falling ceiling. The Andersons from Washington State say water was coming in. It blew through and it just came flooding in. The wave. The wave. The wave yeah. just crashed over. Crashed me. right, crashed right through. And Decker from New Hampshire thought she would drown. We got ocean in our mouth. We thought it was it. The ship was tilted. Victor and Gina from California phoned home from the listing cruise ship. You called your family from the boat yeah, to say said, this what's is going wrong. This is not looking good. How do they respond? Well, they're panicking, crying and stuff. But I said, you know, when we hit land, we'll call you. What was the phone call like when you got to land? Huh? Bomb. Yeah. Thankfully this morning, the Viking sky is back in harbor. Everyone's safe with stories to tell. And today, Norway has launched an investigation into why this cruise ship headed into a storm, knowing that a storm was coming, partly because Norway has had to pay for the entire rescue operation. But I've got to tell you, I was just struck meeting those passengers by how positive they were after such a terrifying experience. Keir Simmons, NBC News, Norway. Now to the Oregon coast, where a woman was seriously injured after a log crushed her. Crews say that she was sitting on this log Saturday near Nehalem Bay when a sneaker wave threw that log right on top of her. She was flown to a Portland hospital. Nehalem Bay Fire and Rescue says this is a reminder never to turn your back on the ocean.